Hi, my name is Melissa van Dijk and in this video I want to share with you a sunscreen guide that I have prepared for you in a PowerPoint. And I want to quickly go over the different topics that we're going to break down, such as when it's the best time to wear sunscreen, then understanding the sunscreen labels when choosing your sunscreen. Then we're looking into if you need to apply sunscreen when being indoors and then the application, when using it on its own, when using it along with skincare products and how you can properly take it off. And this is not about the application. I have such videos on my channel. This is purely about the information that I'm going to break apart for you. So I'm going to leave the application videos in the top right corner when I'm getting to that specific topic so that you then can see it in action as well. And so if you find the PowerPoint slides helpful, you will find the link in the description box down below. You can go over it in your own time and even save them to your device if you like to. And if you want to support my work, if you enjoyed this video on my PowerPoint slides, you will find a super thanks button just below this video or a PayPal link in the description box down below. I would highly appreciate it and I really thank you so much in advance. Now let's get started with the video and let's cover the first topic. This is kind of like a refresher, it's more like a reminder, which is when it's the best time to wear your sunscreen. So overall it is recommended to wear sunscreen throughout the day if you have sun exposure and we are talking about the UV rays, not if you can see the sun or not. So this means that even if it's cloudy, you technically would need to use a sunscreen because the UV rays can still get through it. And so when using your sunscreen, it is important that you're going to still avoid uh, too much sun exposure in general. So the more you can limit your sun exposure, the better for your skin uh, if you're concerned about a damaging UV rays. And so you can limit the time outside between at 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. I went with a broader time frame because depending on where you live, the sun can still be pretty intense, not only just in noon, but before noon and afternoon as well. Therefore, I went with a time of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if you have sun exposure, not only can the sunscreen help you to protect the skin, but seeking shade, being most of the times indoors. But if you can't be indoors, well, then, of course, wear Wearing sunglasses, sunscreen, hats, protective clothing, using an umbrella can all help you to protect the skin from the damaging UV rays. And then of course in the evening since there is no sun, well there is no need to use a sunscreen. So just use it throughout the day. Then when looking into understanding the sunscreen labels, it's important that you need to know what they mean, what they stand for when choosing a sunscreen. So you can see the more specific topic about SPF in general. So this stands for sun protection factor, which is an indication of UVB protection. Now SPF doesn't give you an indication of any level of how much UVA protection it's going to give you, but more on that in just a moment. This specifically now talks about the SPF in general. So when reading the SPF, like strength of your sunscreen, it's going to help you to block up to a so and so percentage of rays. And so here you can see some examples. So SPF of 10 would block up to 90% of the rays. SPF of 20, up to 95% of the rays. SPF of 30, 97, and then SPF of 60, 98. So you can see from SPF 10 to SPF 30, it can make a significant difference of how many, of how much percentage is going to help you to block the rays from the skin. However, from SPF to 30, from SPF to, to 60, it does not really give you like a significant difference. It's just up to like a percentage uh, of sun protection that you are getting more out of it. But still, generally speaking, you can say that SPF of 30 is sufficient for most people to protect the skin throughout the day. However, when choosing an SPF of 60 to get that 1% more sun protection, it isn't wrong to go with such a, uh, such a sunscreen, but compared to the other percentages, it does not really make a lot of a difference. But still, of course, if you have like extended sun exposure, you cannot really seek any shade, you may have not really protective clothing on, using a sunscreen with a higher percentage is always recommended. 
And so when looking into this a bit further, it is still worth noting that SPF protection has nothing to do with how long you are exposed to the sun. Instead, it relates to the amount of solar exposure. So that means that the amount of SPF would offer far less protection when the UV index is too high than it would when the UV index is moderate in terms of how long it is effective. And additionally, the formula of the product has a lot to do with how long the product will actively protect you from the UVB rays. For instance, sunscreens with chemicals, with chemical sun filters begin to lose its efficacy within two hours and it must be reapplied frequently to maintain that protection. So I want to give you an example of what this actually means. So let's say you have currently your SPF 30 on and currently you have quite a lot of sun exposure. The UV index is pretty high. This means that your SPF of 30 will break down much faster when the UV index is high as if you would use it if the UV index is moderate to low. And so therefore, if you say, well, I have like, I have an auto job, I'm constantly being in the sun, uh, there's no way I can really seek shade for like much longer. Well, then of course, the reapplication throughout the day is important, otherwise it's going to break down and it's not going to offer any protection. Whereas if you just have like, or let's say you're going to mainly stay inside the house at work or in school and you only have like short intervals where you're being exposed to the sun throughout the day, well then using an SPF of 30, applying it properly in the morning will offer you enough protection until the evening because you're not being exposed to a high UV index for like a like certain amount of time. So this can make a significant difference depending on what your job may be or your workout or whatsoever based on how often you're going to reapply throughout the day and what SPF you're going to choose. And so when looking into the protection of UVA rays, specifically in the Asian uh, culture, um, Japan originally developed a system that represents how much UVA protection a product will offer you. And so this is quite common, uh, what you can see on Asian sunscreen. So you can not only see SPF of, let's say, 30, but they have PA and then the different pluses behind it. And so the PA stands for the indication of how much UVA protection it can offer you. So you have, for example, PA plus provides some UVA protection. Then you have PA with two pluses, provides moderate UVA protection. With three pluses, high, prote high protection, and with four pluses, extremely high UVA protection. So that you understand that the sunscreen that you're currently using has UVA and UVB protection. Now, the Asian market in that specific term works a bit different than the European or let's say the American market based on what's labeled on your sunscreen. So just because your sunscreen, let's say you have a European sunscreen, just because your sunscreen does not label PA on it, doesn't necessarily mean that it's giving you no protection from UVA. It is more than just that. It's quite a complex topic and it is quite confusing. I just would wish they had one rule for everyone so that everyone would understand how much protection it would offer from UVA and UVB. But this isn't the case, so let's break it down what this would mean. So when looking into your sunscreen and it says that it has a broad spectrum of sun protection, this indicates that the sunscreen contains ingredients that help to effectively protect against UVB and UVA. So this is most commonly also used in European American sunscreens. So it does not, as already mentioned, it does not indicate PA, but it says broad spectrum. And so in that specific case, you know that it gives you the protection of both, but it doesn't really specifically give you a direction of how much UVA protection it will give you. So this is still kind of like, it's lacking of transparency, let's put it this way. Then when looking into a water-resistant sunscreen, well, this tells you that the sunscreen is resistant to water and can wash away anywhere between 40 to 80 minutes after application. And then if you should have sensitive skin, usually chemical sunscreens can be more irritating to sensitive skin. So you may want to look into a mineral or physical sunscreen instead that contains zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. So it's less irritating on the skin. But of course, this depends on if you have sensitive skin or not. If you do not have sensitive skin, well, then it's basically up to you if you want to go with a chemical sunscreen or a physical sunscreen. 
and then the skin cancer foundation and other medical professionals advise that you use a broad spectrum sunscreen with a minimum of spf 15 every day however if you're doing extended outdoor activities it is recommended that you use a broad spectrum water resistant sunscreen with an spf of 30 or even higher and so there you have already like everything broken down what you need to know when reading your sunscreen to understand the labels now here's an interesting topic which is often not really controversial but it's questionable if you really need it or not and this is should you wear sunscreen indoors well uvb rays are the primarily uv rays that cause the sunburn so while windows block them to a large extent, more than 50% of the UVA rays can penetrate these barriers. That said, UVA and UVB rays can still reach you if you're within several feet of a window. So if you're really being close by, you still can get those like damages to the skin. And since both rays contribute to the development of skin cancer, you should use sunscreen even indoors, especially when sitting close to a window. So. Talking about this, if you really need it or not, this primarily depends on where you live, where you work, where you're being at school. If you really have a window close by and it's really like, for example, the sun side or even not the sun side, but you still have a sitting really close to it and you're being concerned about it, using sunscreen indoors isn't wrong to do so. It can help you to protect from those rays. However, of course, if you're not sitting close to a window or you have blinds that you can like uh, basically like roll down so that it's going to protect you from the sun rays, well then of course this would be another option. So this is of course individual depending on your day-to-day -day activities and where you live. Now when it comes to the overall application, I want to summarize it so that you still have a guide in mind. So always apply your sunscreen at 10 to 15 minutes before sun exposure. As a general rule, use about half a teaspoon for your face, neck and ears. And if you want to include your decolletage, then use about a teaspoon. Now this guide can be slightly adjusted. So if you feel like it feels uncomfortable on the skin, it's too thick on the skin, and you may still have some leftovers on your fingers, you can go ahead and reduce the amount of product but what I mainly want to teach you here is that you should use a fair amount to evenly and properly blend it all over so that you're not going to miss any area. So rather use a bit too much than not enough when it comes to properly blending it all over your face and neck and even your decolletage or maybe your body as well. And so if you want to see a specific guide about the sunscreen application, I'm going to leave it in the top right corner so that you can see this visually as well. So what should you do if you are going to apply your sunscreen and you have a skincare routine? Well, here you can already see the image. On the bottom, you can see the little bottles like cleanser, toner, essence, serums. They are already in the correct order of application. So your sunscreen should be the last step in your morning skincare routine, following your serums and moisturizers if you use them. And if you want to apply makeup, do so on top of your SPF, but then make sure that you're going to give your sunscreen about like five to 10 minutes in between so it can set before you're going to apply your makeup on top so that you're not going to move it around. And so you can use this guide with the order of application, depending on the price that you want to include so that you know when you should include the different steps. And then when it comes to how you should properly remove your sunscreen, this is still an important indicator to share with you because I feel like most sunscreens come off quite easily with your regular cleanser. You can do this above the sink or in the shower. My best advice would be in the shower, especially if you have applied it on your ears, face, neck, decolletage, maybe even your body. It's just much more convenient. And it is important to uh, remove your sunscreen properly from the skin so that you can avoid getting like a drying feeling or even clogged pores. So once you have spent your day in the evening, you're going to properly take everything off the skin before you're going to either leave it as it is or continue with your evening skincare routine. But what you have to keep in mind is that depending on the sunscreen that you're using, you may need to adjust your cleansing step. So with most common sunscreens on the market, especially the chemical ones, who are like the mixture of mineral with chemical ones, those are usually very easy to remove. They can, to some extent, even be removed with water, but I still recommend using a cleanser to make sure that everything comes off the skin. But when working with a mineral sunscreen, 
and you have worn a makeup on top that's quite stubborn or pigmented, I recommend using an oil or balm cleanser either on its own, which is able to break already everything down in one go, or you're going to do a double cleanse where you're using your oil or balm cleanser at first and then you're moving on to your regular cleanser that targets your skin type or maybe the specific skin concerns if you should have a treatment cleanser so that you can properly take everything off the skin before you're moving on to the next step or just leave it as it is. So taking off your sunscreen is important, taking off your makeup is important, please do not sleep in it because it may cause more issues when it comes to your skin than doing any good to you. And so if you want to see how you can properly remove your sunscreen with an oil or balm cleanser or the usual method, I'm going to leave a video on the top right corner, but I'm making sure that I'm going to leave the videos at the end of this video as well, so that you can see the summary as well, because you can go with regular cleanser or doing just the oil or balm cleansing method or the double cleanse. So in total, you could go with three different methods if you would like to. But of course, make sure that you're choosing the right one based on your sunscreen that you're using and based on what feels comfortable on the skin. And so this is what I mainly want to share with you when it comes to the sunscreen guide and how you can properly work with your sunscreen, how you can understand the labels and how you can apply it and take it off the skin. I do hope that you enjoyed this video, that you find it helpful. If you did so, please don't forget to give the thumbs up as well as share it. And if you now want to learn more about it, I have several videos at the end of this video, but more of them on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skin caring. Bye.